I thank the Creator today for gather, gathering us here today in unity for one uh, common goal uh, and a common cause to stop fracking. This is Elsa Boktok, home of the Mi'kmaq. They have been stewards of this land for as long as anyone can remember. Elsa Boktok is located in New Brunswick, Canada and has become one of the front lines for resistance to shale gas exploration and a process called fracking that is used to extract the gas. Fracking is a complicated process of drilling wells and using various methods to fracture the rock, releasing natural gas or petroleum trapped within pockets underground. Critics of the process worry it will also spew volumes of toxins into the air and pollute ground and surface water systems. Protesters in Alsabuktuk, New Brunswick, are asking for a moratorium on shale gas exploration until more is known about the long-term effects of fracking. I hope that we can protect our land and water, not only for our own sake, but for, but for the, the, the life of all things, you know, animals in the woods, uh, fish. Uh, there'll be no salmon if they continue to destroy and uh, pollute the water. Without water, there's no life. And ultimately, that's, that's what it boils down to. So in, um, in working together as communities, it's across community um, lines. It's literally underneath people's properties. And it's often done in rural areas. This protest camp began in the spring of 2013 when the seismic engineering firm SWN Resources Canada, a Texas-based company, started exploring for shale gas. If significant gas deposits are found, then fracking is the usual next step. The El Sabuktuk First Nation claimed there was no consultation with the community and that exploration is going ahead on unceded Mi'kmaq land. The government and the company dispute those claims. Over the summer of 2013, other Wabanaki peoples, Acadians, Anglophones, and church groups came together and tried to stop all seismic exploration. I was, I was so proud when I, I, I walked in here this morning to, the, uh, to these powwow grounds and saw uh, the sign, United Church in Solidarity, with the people here and the flag. Uh, and uh, it just made my heart sore that my church would take that kind of a stand. So uh, I, I said that from the, from the stage, and, and uh, I think it's important. Um, and, you know, that just we're living our faith in, in, in uh, being present here as church. It's about all of those who are allied and all of those who, who, who depend on the land and the water and the air to, for, our live, for our life. So it is with the spirit of unity and solidarity that I offer these words today. And I'm very proud of the people who have been here at this peace camp for, for keeping it peaceful because all it would take would be one wrong move and believe you me, that's what they will point to. Well, what's interesting on this uh, whole campaign has been the number of people who have told me they've never ever been in a protest before who've been coming out to protest. Um, whether it's uh, retired people or um, uh, not too far from here, uh, local priests and, and some of the nun sisters from the area have come out. It's just uh, incredible, incredible how it's uniting people across, uh, across peoples from First Nations. And... I think that's the first time that uh, the Acadian French and the uh, Francophone and Anglophone and uh, First Peoples uh, have united this strongly around an issue. The United Church Maritime Conference is supporting actions against shale gas uh, through its Aboriginal Concerns and Relations Working Group and through our associations and partnership with the Aboriginal Rights Coalition Atlantic. That stepping up really that the United Church has done has been really inspiring I think for a lot of people who really see this as um, you know, belief in action and justice in action. What I saw was um, passionate,
peaceful protest. Um, flag waving, songs, and asking questions. There were a couple of things that raised some questions for me. Uh, one was um, the arrest of an eight-month pregnant woman. Uh, I, um, I, I've never been on a police force, so I can't, you know, I, I certainly can't pass judgment, but I didn't think that that was necessarily the right choice. There was a, an elderly non-Aboriginal woman who was moved by police back behind the, the line that they had created on the highway over which protesters were not meant to cross. And uh, the arrest of another elderly Aboriginal woman who had done the same. So there was a difference in treatment. If, if everything's so nice and peaceful, look, all good to you. I, I, I wish I was like that, but I just want to welcome the spirit also of, of people who are very angry. Sponsoring a training in nonviolence, which will enable uh, a anyone from uh, a United Church congregation or, or the surrounding uh, communities to, to be adequately trained to really understand what um, the range of actions are that constitute nonviolent resistance and also to understand what their rights were and what the risks are in terms of um, the potential for arrest. For us, you know, like, this is our home, and it's, it's been our home for thousands of years, you know. It's not like we can just pack up our bags and, you know, like, and move to another country. It's not like that. This is where we're from. You know, we're the First Nations, and this is our territory here. Um, it's not enough simply to listen to uh, news reports or to read news reports. The importance of being um, on the line is to show support in that visible way uh, that points the way for other people. Either, either we fight them and go to jails or, you know, we, we, we're going to die, you know, like, we're not going to lie. There's all kinds of things we can do. Put up a table and give out information about the fracking, but, you know, and learn. Be available to learn. Get off your butts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sit in the pews. We can pray and pray and pray to God, but we have to do our part. That's what I always say. Yeah.